Thank you for uh, letting me uh, come and talk with you tonight. Jennifer was nice enough to uh, give me a paper that I would try to keep this to about 10 minutes or less. You'll want to use the laptop. Okay. Okay. So we just, we are going, uh, Randall School District is going for referendum on April 3rd. And I wanted to just give you a little bit of background on this. But before I did, I just wanted to share with you, I think I was here about two and a half years ago with our operational referendum. <coughs> And I'm not going to read this to you, but I will tell you that uh, we have outstanding things going on in our school district. Um, we've got a staff that, that I personally believe is second to none, um, high achieving students, um, a number of new academic programs. Um, we also have strong extracurricular athletics, clubs, and music, a strong reputation of the district. And we worked really hard over the last four years of our technology integration, our intervention programming, our gift and intelligence. <coughs> and probably the slide that I'm very most proud of is, is some of you may be aware that the school, Department of Public Instruction does a school report card annually. So if you look at, first I'll say you'll wonder why is 2015 skipped um, the state assessment. There was no state assessment that year, so there was no school report card. So the state basically looks at student achievement, student growth, how kids are moving, um, closing gaps of different uh, categories of students, students with disabilities, economically disadvantaged, and then post-secondary readiness. And really, really proud is if you look here in 2017, we were in the top 10% in the state of Wisconsin at the significantly exceeds expectations. So, I think this graph right here just shows all of the wonderful things. It's one measure, and I think our district is really doing a great job and a great testament to our kids and to our staff and to our community. So if you remember back in 2015, we had an operational referendum, and these were our goals. And again, just for time's sake, I'm not going to read all of this to you. I can make a copy of this um, available to Jennifer, and she can forward it on to you. But um, those were our 2015 referendum goals. Our biggest promise was is that we had promised to keep the mill rate, which was in 2014-15, at $6.61 or less. That was our promise, our goal. And as you can see, um, we were able to keep that mill rate below $6.61. This past year actually at $6.44. While doing that, we enhanced the number of new project uh, opportunities for kids. And we are, are kind of against the state average. Most school districts are seeing a declining enrollment. Um, Randall is one of about 25% of the districts that is actually seeing a growth in enrollment, um, which we had not seen for about 10 years. Um, we actually have two new families starting tomorrow, um, five new kids. So we will actually be at tomorrow 697 kids. So kids are starting to move into the area, coming into our district. Um, so we're really excited about that. So, on April 3rd, we're going to be asking our taxpayers to pass two referendums. The reason it's two referendums is by state statute, there's, we have an operational referendum, which is basically the costs that are affiliated with running the school, staff and all curriculums and such. And then if there's a facility upgrade where there's any building projects <coughs> outside, it has to be a separate question or a debt question. So that's why you'll see or we'll be asking two questions. Probably the second biggest slide that I'm going to share with you today, in my opinion, is why do we need an operational referendum and some school districts don't. There's three big pieces that have really affected our school finance. Um, number one is since 2011, there has been no increase to the revenue cap formula, and that's basically the funding formula for schools. That's been flat. Prior to 2011, it was a $200 increase per student every year. So that's remained flat since 2011. Second one is back in 1993, um, there was a freeze on the base revenue per student. So wherever you were in 1993, that was your spending per student. No districts had any heads up of when that was coming. Randall was at $9,342 per student. The state average, not the highest, the state average is $10,439. If we were allowed to, or if we were just able to get to the state average, that would produce a revenue of about $600,000 to our district. That's almost what we're asking for for our operational referendum. So if either one of these or combinations of these two things changed in our state funding formula, 
that's the main reason why we, we need to go to operational referendum or renew our operational referendum. And just a, a last part here, and I know you, all of you are aware of state aid and state funding, but our school district has lost almost $1.2 million in state aid over the last 10 years. So those three factors have really got us to the point where we are today. So I'm going to kind of go quickly because I want to be cognizant of your time. If we use the Baird budget model, if we were not to go out to referendum, and this is a tool we used three years ago, here is our anticipated deficits over the next three years. That is not cumulative, that is each year. So some people have asked me, well, why don't you go, why don't you use your fund balance to just take care of the operating expense? Well, if you look at our fund balance, our fund balance is just under a million dollars. We would be able to basically take that for a little bit over a year, and then we would be <coughs> in the red um, in terms of our funding. So another reason why we need the operational referendum. So three things determine how our schools are funded. Our student enrollment, the base revenue, which I had talked about, and any non-reoccurring exemptions, one of them being our current referendum that is falling off at the end of the school year. So we're asking to renew the current operational referendum. Some of it is obviously beyond our control. Some of it is obviously um, property values and things like that. But if we look at area school districts in terms of their mill rate, a lot of this has to do with what that revenue formula is. Um, we have the second lowest mill rate of the K-8s in our vicinity. So again, just previous reductions we made prior to our first referendum, and then ones that we've continued to do over the last three years. <coughs> so our solution for the operational referendum is a 675,000 three-year operational referendum. You're seeing more and more districts that are going to recurring referendums. And what that means is basically it's there forever. Our school board discussed that for literally about 30 seconds. Because we don't know what the state funding formula is going to be in three years, four years, five years. So for us to go out and say we want this forever, um, we don't feel that we would be good stewards to our taxpayers. We, we did a three year last time. We were able to predict it almost exactly with the information we had. So we feel that a three year referendum is, is the right amount for us to do. Probably the biggest bullet is what's in the red. By passing this referendum, we will be able to maintain what we're doing at Randall School. We're not looking to add new, you know, major programs or add you know, more administrative staff or any of that. What we're asking to do is basically maintain our current staffing level and the current programs at Randall. So that's the first question. Our second question is, we're going to ask for a $5.5 billion facility referendum. As you guys know, state statute allows us to basically take that debt out for 20 years. What we did is we worked backwards into it, and we wanted to take the debt out for the fewest amount of years for a couple reasons. Number one, savings of interest cost, but also because, as you know, this area is growing. Um, there's a lot of potential growth in this area that we wanted to make sure that we did take debt out for longer than we absolutely knew we needed it for. And then if down the line in 12, 15 years, if the district needs to again grow or expand, we would be having this debt come off of the referendum. So, first one is, well, the part of the facility program or facility referendum is enhancing our security at both entrances. Our elementary has one locked door and then people get buzzed in and there's a secretary that sits right there. So what our plan is on the elementary office is to add a vestibule. If you've ever been to the high school where you get buzzed in and you're in a contained area with a sliding window so someone is greeting you immediately. Our elementary side is much more secure than our junior high side. If you've ever been over to Randall, our junior high side, you get buzzed in. We have cameras, but you get buzzed in. But you literally have about 200 feet where you have to walk before you even get to an adult in the building. You also have access to be able to, coming in the junior high, to not come to the office and go directly into the gym. So our model, our plan, is to create that same vestibule in the back of the building um, for security purposes. 
Second part is expansion of our cafeteria and multi-purpose room. Currently, right now, our space is not large enough for all kids to eat in our cafeteria. We have currently, right now, our second graders have to eat in their classrooms. We have some grades that have about 15 minutes to eat because of the size of our cafeteria. So our proposal is to add out of the cafeteria and multi-purpose room to accommodate our growing population, also giving kids an, an opportunity to eat, and also to add some space for our nighttime activities that our community that uses our multi-purpose room. Next is a replacement of our elementary roof, which was installed in 1987. We're, we're seeing major leaks in a couple of the areas. Um, we've done some repairs back in 2008, um, and those repairs are really at its kind of life expectancy. The next is adding of four classrooms in our elementary wing. We currently do not have an open room on our elementary side. In fact, we had to convert this summer um, two of our kind of, well, one was our records room and one was a storeroom into one into a special education area for students and also for another one for a small group for interventions. So our plan is, if you're familiar with Randall, is basically to connect our third through fifth grade wing to our junior high wing. So it also adds some flexibility to that area. The other three components of the referendum is some deferred maintenance projects, including um, outdated flooring. We have carpeting in our building from 1993 from the last referendum. So we have some carpeting that needs to be replaced in our junior high classrooms and classroom cabinets in our elementary wing that in some areas are over 40 years old. I know some of you that have been in our building, we have literally the cabinets are splintering and kids as they're reaching for things. Um, it really is becoming a safety issue. Some upgrades to our mechanical cooling equipment that was installed in 1993 and earlier that needs some upgrades, a new well and some electrical upgrades. This I put on here is, this is more of a byproduct of the end of the classroom, so it will actually create uh, an outdoor learning area for our students. This is no additional cost to the referendum, it's just by the way the two wings will be connected, but we're actually really excited about some of the possibilities we have to give kids for those opportunities. So always, the question is always, what does this mean for our taxes, taxpayers of, of uh, Randall School District? So we are per, um, working with the Baird model, working with uh, Baird Financial. We are anticipating a $88 increase, and so this is on a $200,000 home with a successful passage of both referendums. So about $7.33. That increase will be in the first year, and then that amount will stay flat over the next two years. So that's the impact it will have on our taxpayers. And again, just now kind of looking at, even with a $6.88 mill rate, we still will have the lowest mill rate in uh, the Wilmot High School Theater District. So, I know I gave you a ton of information. I gave this presentation a week ago. It was about 50 minutes. We've got another one coming up on March 7th. But I wanted to kind of just give you a quick overview, see if you had any questions. If you have any more individual questions, if you'd like to come to meet with me or come to our <coughs> next session, which will be on March 7th at Randall, um, I would welcome you to come. But I wanted to at least give you a, a big picture overview and if you have any questions for me. So we'll have the two referendum questions on April 3rd. I have no questions, okay. but I'm in Lakewood. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. so, so why can't some of the things that we offer to the students be paid for by the parents if they want the music or the sports in, instead of having taxpayers have to pay for all this? Yeah, it's a, it's, that's a great question. I think a couple of things is that, number one is the cost for, like our entire athletic program, from all of the coaches and, and things like that for our school, is about $50,000. So, you know, when we start to look at the big picture of the budget, just of that alone, would not take care of that part. And I'll be honest with you, it's a great question, one that we get asked a lot. I think, in my personal opinion as an educator, 
is that that is part of those educational experiences that we want to offer to all kids. Our free and reduced population is growing at Wrangell just like the entire area. So one of the things too is we never want to take opportunities away for kids to give them those, those opportunities and those chances. I think it's, it's a fair question, but I think from an educational standpoint, I think all of those are kind of the big picture of what education is. And like our music program is run within our day. It's part, it's a scheduled class in there. So I think it would be a, a, not impossible, but might be difficult to you know, charge kids for programs that are offered within the school day. Okay, so, so now do these kids pay for their um, uniforms that they perform in? All of our uniforms for our athletic programs are paid for through, we have our Randall Booster Club, and all of the uniforms, all of that is paid for through concessions or things outside of that. So we do, the only thing that we pay for out of our operating budget is the stipends for the coaches, and any of the travel to and from the games. And most of the games are within 15 miles. We actually have two of our coaches now that have, their, have received their CDL bus licenses, so they're driving the kids to the buses as coaches. So that's one area that we've looked to reduce that cost. And, and what, <coughs> what about this free breakfast program? What, what does that cost? It doesn't cost, so the state has is that if, if a family meets the criteria for free or reduced lunches, the school district does not pay for any of that. We get that reimbursed from the state. Now, kids that come in that can afford to pay for the breakfast, they pay for this breakfast or yes. they have to pay for it? Yes. Okay. Yep. Yep, good question. Right. I'll ask this question. Sure. Because I've had two past, past my school board people mention this to me. The, the Lakewood slash Randall, and as you're looking at adding, have you guys, the idea of merging in any way, has that come back up? It, you I, know I, I, I'm hesitant to even ask. Well, it, it has. Um, I know our two school boards this year, um, I don't know if you're aware of this, but Lakewood does currently right now, their district administrator position is available or is open right now. So there's been a little bit of conversation among the just the two board levels because it's been very recent. Um, it, it's kind of a long process. So obviously the timing of this is not absolutely perfect to get an answer to this, to that. I know that Twin Lakes has posted <coughs> that position and are looking to fill that. Um, I think it's a continued conversation that at least our, the two current boards right now um, have had just very informal conversations about that. And I know the four years I've been there, there's been no serious conversations about that at this point. Yeah. At, at one time, I, I know, consolidating the schools together, um, we had some board members here from the Rendler School and said that they didn't want to pick up the debt that Lakewood owed and Randall was in the black. So they were, that's one of the reasons they didn't want to consolidate? Yeah, I think each school district could handle their own debt for, there's always I mean, wouldn't it, it, just wouldn't it, wouldn't it be feasible to <coughs> consolidate? I, I think there's, I think there's, there's, it would have to be a pretty extensive study. I don't feel prepared to stand in front of you today and say, yes, I think financially, it, you know, it's for sure. There's a lot of districts across the state that have looked at consolidation and based on geographics and some of the debt, some of the programs and, and different staffs and things like that, they found that, that it wasn't a long-term feasible situation. State used to give quite a bit of an incentive for school districts to consolidate. That incentive has been reduced in the last biennium budget. There still is an incentive, but there's a sunset that I believe, don't quote me on this, but I believe I think it's like five years. So there's a, a short incentive to try to work through some of those things. Um, but I don't feel qualified tonight here to say to you that, you know, it would be a good thing financially. Um, but I do know that the two school districts are really trying to work hard to work together. Um, we're certainly not adversarial in any way, um, you know, because we're trying to prepare kids for the high school. I mean, that's our ultimate goal. Those questions are 
ideas have been floating around since my children were in grade school in yeah. the 70s. But now it's more interesting because, <coughs> because Twin Lakes is continuing to grow, and almost every thing we're looking at is in Randall. It's, it's not a Twin Lake, because Twin Lakewood, I should say, Lakewood's pretty much landlocked already. Their school district, their district, not likely to get the growth. Almost all the growth is going to happen in Randall. So, Randall, yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.